Welcome to the Pylon Cam YouTube channel. It's your boy Mike back with another mock draft for you guys. This is our second mock draft of the year, like I said. Um, and if you missed our first mock draft, I went pretty in depth of what I think about the quarterbacks in this class. And when I was getting ready for this video, I was kind of tinkering with some things and kind of trying to think through this post draft type because a lot could happen from now into draft season. A lot of things could change. Like, for instance, Justin Fields being the clear-cut quarterback number two to it being Zach Wilson. So, with all that being said, I've, I, I was looking at some things, and I found this stat that I'm going to post on the screen real quick. And it says, of the 301 quarterbacks drafted over the last 25 years, only two of them were under 5'11 and 200 pounds. Neither were drafted within the first 100 picks. Bryce Young currently stands at 5'10 and 190 and is tied as the favorite to be the first overall pick. So for me, I've been reading reports that he's actually, in fact, smaller. He's in the 180s range. And I think that even though he definitely is the most out-of-the-box ready quarterback in the draft, he is going to fall. I don't think it's as obvious. Like him being the number one overall pick is as obvious as everybody thinks. I could be wrong, and I think there's a very good chance that I'm also wrong, but I think there's an equally as good chance that I'm right. I also wanted to post this that I found on Twitter today as well. Um, I'm going to read it and I'll post it on the screen. Um, Will Levis is reportedly viewed as the top quarterback uh, for several NFL teams right now. The Kentucky QB is the oldest of the pro projected top three QBs um, at 23 years old. And I think that this is this mock draft is going to get really uncomfortable really fast because it's not going to be like anything that I've seen or I've seen people post like I know Broshmo is like super into uh, Bryce Young and everybody that I've seen is and I'm into Bryce Young. I think he is the best quarterback in the class, but I also think that I would very much steer clear because for him to succeed and win a Super Bowl, it is such an outlier of a possibility. Um, but anyway, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into this first pick. Um, so with the first pick, uh, I am going to take Will Levis. I think after the combine that he is going to fly up people's draft boards. I already saw a clip of him uh, stationary throwing a ball 50 yards. I don't like Levis. Like, if you want to know how I feel about these quarterbacks, go watch the last video. Um, I'm very picky with my quarterback prospects that I would draft. I think that way there's, there's this misconception that, oh, you're picking top five, you're picking top 10, you have to take a quarterback, and the quarterback you take is going to be your franchise. Like, how many times have we seen that bottom out and not work? Um, I think that if you have a prospect you really like, move hell and high water to go get him. Like, I don't think if the Chiefs paid double what they did to move up and get Mahomes, they'd be upset right now because Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL. Um, that's just how I feel. Like, you could disagree in the comments. And I also want to say, like, if I get anything wrong about your, your team or misspeak about a contract or a situation, please correct me because, like, this is for... This is for you and it's for me just to talk about balls. So like, that's all I care about in these videos. Um, but at pick two, we got the Chicago Bears. Last week, they were pick three. Um, and I'm going to go with Jalen Carter. I think this is a pretty deep edge class. Um, and if I think there's going to be some good prospects that fall, particularly thinking of like Isaiah Foskey, uh, Nolan Smith, some people that I've seen go back and forth in the first round. Um, so I'm going to take Jalen Carter here at pick two. I think he's been drawing Aaron Donald comps. And I, if you watched the last video, you know how I feel about comps as well. I think comps are just so often taken out of hand. Like, I, I don't think anybody should be as a, in college should be getting compared to Aaron Donald's. I don't think that's even realistic. And I also think that the comp for Will Levis shouldn't be Josh Allen. I think it's Carson Wentz, uh, which is way more realistic. Um, and then at pick three, we have Seattle, and I think this is a no-brainer. We're going to take Will Anderson. Um, just some things about Will Anderson. As I go through these videos, I'm going to start to talk more in-depth about each uh, prospect the more I study up on them and stuff. Um, I mean, Will Anderson, uh, Will Anderson, his junior year is the year he really broke out, but I think one of the most impressive things about Will Anderson is he was able to start the first game he was able to as a true freshman and has started every, ever since at Alabama. He's 6'4", 245. He started 40 of out of 40 games. Um, he was granted captainship as a sophomore and kept that as a junior. Um, and, it, and his stats definitely regressed in 2022, not due to a lack of play. Um, I think that teams just really started to pay attention to him and game plan against stopping Will Anderson, which is why we saw him get picked up by... Um, 
he picked up a lot of chip blocks by tight ends and and running backs um but he is just like i don't think he's real to be honest with you i think he's a franchise franchise guy he's someone you build your your uh team around um or your defense around, I should say. And then at pick three, we have the lot uh, up. Excuse me. I pick four. We have the Lions. Uh, this pick is courtesy of the Rams. And this pick is interesting because you definitely could make the case to go quarterback. I kind of think that like you're paying Jared Goff. He's playing good enough now. Just build your defense up through the draft. Well, since like you could cut Jared Goff, but you're competitive now. So building the roster to continue to be competitive next year makes the most sense. But I also do hear the counter argument of like the Lions are good now. There's no misconception that the Lions have built a good competitive roster under Dan Campbell. So you're probably not picking up here again anytime soon. So taking CJ Stroud or Bryce Young does make a lot of sense. But like I said, like I'm pretty picky with my quarterbacks. I think the Lions know that they are going to be in contention for the NFC North champ, uh, Conference. Uh, sorry, the NFC North Division title next year. And they're kind of in it now if they didn't get off to such a slow start. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take Miles Murphy. Like I said, this draft is just, this draft's going to get ugly real quick. And then at pick five, or I'm sorry, pick six. No, no, pick five. We have the Arizona Cardinals. And this is a team that I'm kind of expecting to trade Kyler Murray and blow it all up. Um, it's just a matter of time. I don't think their owner even like, like I said this in the last video, the Cardinals are a very dysfunctional organization and they've been a very dysfunctional organization and everybody forgets that because they drafted Kyler Murray and hired Cliff Kingsbury. I have never liked Cliff Kingsbury. I've always thought he was an overrated coach. He couldn't win in college with Patrick Mahomes. Imagine not being able to win with Patrick Mahomes for a second. Um, and I've, I've pretty much thought that Kyler was overrated, but I thought that drafting him was the right move. I do think Kyler is very overrated. Um, Cardinals fans, please don't kill me for this, but, um, I just think that you drafted, you, you extended a coach that you don't like, and you paid a quarterback that your owner doesn't like. I don't, I think he kind of just wants to cut ties. You could probably trade Kyler for King's Ransom and build this franchise up the right way. Um, and for me, that starts with the trenches. So we're going to go ahead and take, uh, I was back and forth between Paris Johnson. I just think Peter Skaronsky gives way more flexibility if they go the rebuild route, but he also, um, just as a good pick right now because he's plug and play at right tackle and you could uh, Kelvin Beecham is going to be a free agent this year. So you just stick Skronsky at uh, right tackle. But um, there is a concerns with Skronsky. He does have really, really short arms and like, I mean, like very short arms. Um, so I do understand why people are hesitant with Skronsky, but he's plug and play anywhere on the line. Um, and I do think he's going to translate into the NFL pretty well. Um, then at pick six, we have the Colts. And this might shock some people as well, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take CJ Stroud here. I think that the size thing is going to be a very big deal, and I could be wrong. Like, I could be horribly wrong, but I think that, like, with how much of an outlier Bryce Young has, it's not a talent thing, and I can't stress that enough. It's not a talent thing. He's already getting hurt in college. And it like the 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 opposition only gets bigger and faster. Like I think that it's a very big deal at the next level. That it's going to be very hard for Bryce Young to be like that. To to I mean we're seeing Justin Fields get hurt. We're seeing Tua get hurt. We're seeing Kyler get hurt. Who are all bigger than Bryce Young, and they're still on the smaller size of quarterbacks in the NFL. Like even Russell Wilson as well. Like. I'm like I think this is gonna play a way bigger factor than the internet realizes, like than Twitter, than YouTube realizes, and I could be wrong, but I'm just saying I think that it's again like it's a, it's a big deal to me. Um, so I went with C.J. Stroud for the Colts at pick uh, pick six, um, and then at pick seven we have Atlanta, and I don't know why nobody is talking about Atlanta drafting a quarterback like Marcus Mariota quit the team and Desmond Ritter probably isn't isn't it like if they didn't if they waited to start desmond ritter for marcus mariota to quit he probably isn't showing a lot in practice um and i was admittedly high on desmond ritter um again like not someone i would draft like I, when I, there's someone i would draft i'll be very very adamant about it like caleb williams um someone i definitely would draft drake may i'm still in between but i'm leaning towards i would draft drake may um and then I, for here like I don't see Atlanta rolling into next year with a quarterback. Um, 
and like this is this is gonna be controversial, but I think with how this offense runs and with the weapons they have, I think they would gamble on Anthony Richardson. And like you could say that Anthony Richardson is a he's a project guy. Yeah, he is, but and I and like again, if you want to know how I feel about Anthony Richardson, watch the last video. I don't want to make these videos super redundant. Um, but I think that with how Atlanta is rebuilding, they have time to coach up Anthony Richardson. And the first year is probably going to be really ugly. And Anthony Richardson admittedly played much better in the second half of the year than he did the first half of the year, even though he threw up a stinker with like, th somehow he threw like three touchdowns with a 33% completion percentage, which still doesn't make sense to me. But um, I think that, yeah. They're, they, I think Richardson actually fits in that offense very well as it's a very run run first offense. And Anthony Richardson is massive. Like, I think he, like, Justin Fields is pretty big and he's getting hurt a lot running. He got hurt a lot this season running. Um, I think Anthony Richardson, you got some more durability in there. And then Carolina at pick eight, they've been linked to Will Levis, but with Levis being gone, I'm going to go ahead and take Bryce Young here. At pick eight. Um, I think that Carolina needs a quarterback. I think they have pieces for Bryce Young to succeed. But again, like, I don't know. How, like, I, I, to me, the durability is a, is a very, very big deal. I, I think because you could be the best player in the NFL. If you can't play, you can't play. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, you're no good on the bench. Like, look at Andrew Luck. Like, Andrew Luck had to retire super early. And he was, like, four times the size of Bryce Young. Um, so, anyway. Carolina goes Bryce Young, and they get their quarterback in the future. Again, like, it's not a I can't stress it enough. Like, it's not a talent thing with Bryce Young. It's not. It is just the durability thing. He has to be such an out, like, such an outlier. Such an outlier for him to succeed. Um, he can make all the throws. He's mobile, but, it, like, if he gets hit one time the wrong way, he's, like, done. Like, and you can say that for anybody, but, like, the probability of him just getting flattened. I mean, Tua's got, like, 20 pounds on him, and Tua, like, dies every time he gets hit. Um, but anyway, Philly at pick nine, courtesy of the Saints. Uh, I think this pick, um, we're going to go with Christian Gonzalez. He's my number one corner in the class. He's a monster press man corner, uh, plays the boundary really well. I just think that with James Bradbury on an expiring deal, Darius Slay getting, or Slay getting up there in age, um, just it's it's just a good pick. Like Christian Gonzalez is one of the best players in the draft. You really can't mess this pick up if you're the Eagles. Just take a position of need and move on and be happy. Um, but Raiders at pick ten, and right here uh, we are gonna go with um, someone I'm kind of moving up my draft board quite a bit. Uh, P I listened to a PFF podcast and they brought some things to light about Jared Verse that I didn't know uh, that were fascinating. Um, he has a 23.6, or sorry, 23.4% pass rush win rate on only 167 uh, pass rush snaps. Um, he's got wicked powerful hands. Like, you watch him hit people, like as in blockers, and they just, like, bounce off of him. He uh, he has a pretty good bag of tricks in terms of edge rushing moves. Um, he's got a good bull rush, a club move, a spin move, and a, um, an arm over move. He transferred from Albany. And for the little time that he's been playing at the position, he's very, very pro uh, polished. And I thought that this was a very interesting quote from the PFF podcast. I don't know if I agree with it to as much as they're saying it, but this is how the guys at PFF viewed Jared Verse. If you're someone who's like very into PFF, um, they said <clears throat> Jared Verse is a lot closer to Will Anderson then the next closest edge defender is to Jared Verse. So that tells you how high they value Jared Verse. Um, he does have a track background, which explains um, his open field speed and just his explosiveness off the line. He can line up with his hand in the dirt or from or standing. Um, he probably is going to fit best into a 4-3 four de uh, four, defense. Um, and he beat up on uh, Matthew Bergenon. Uh who's going to like he's a player who's going to be in the senior bowl and is very highly regarded um and he beat him twice he beat him once at albany and one at once at florida state so keep your eye on jared verse he's a very interesting prospect i think for the raiders like someone a team that's really generating no pressure aside from max crosby like 
If Jared Verse is as good as the guys at PFF thinks he is, and I've watched the tape, he does look crazy explosive. Um, I think it's going to be a really good pick. And I, I'm that, this is someone who I've gotten very, like, I said this a lot last video as well, but, like, this is a prospect who I'm now very excited for their combine um, because I think that he's going to test out like an absolute monster. And then I pick 11. And I'm going to preface this with, with this for Jaguars fans, so I, I'm sorry if this upsets you, but you're not picking at 11. Like, you're going to win that division. Trevor Lawrence will probably win the MVP next year when Calvin Ridley comes back and probably lead the league in passing yards. I tweeted that out, so I'm not afraid to say that because it's already on the record. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be the second best quarterback in football next year, still behind Patrick Mahomes, but you could add him. Quentin Johnston here, he already has Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones. You could get him someone else in free agency. Um, but with Cam Robinson getting hurt again, and this was the argument I made for this pick last draft, like don't let the offensive line be the reason Trevor Lawrence fails next year if he were to fail, which he's not. But with Cam Robinson just recently getting hurt, I think he tore his Achilles. I could be wrong, but I know he definitely got hurt um, and is out. He's like not going to play this week, which does hurt because your offensive line is still pretty bad. I'm going to take my favorite tackle in the class, um, which is Broderick Jones. I think Broderick Jones is a great run blocker in, in a Doug Peterson offense. The Jaguars are going to look to run the ball a lot. Um, they do already run it a lot with Travis Etienne. I don't know why you guys don't throw more passes to Travis Etienne, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and I just realized I didn't click first round only when I started this draft. That's why there's so many things here. But we're only going to round one. Uh, pick 12 for the Texans. This is via the Browns trade for Deshaun Watson. We're going to go ahead and get the Brandon Cooks replacement. Um, and you could argue the best receiver in the class in Jordan Addison. Um... I don't think we have to think too much about this one. Like, you got a new quarterback. Get him some weapons. Uh, I like Nico Collins, which is the reason I'm taking him. I'm taking Addison over Quentin Johnson. I think Nico Collins is actually a pretty solid player and will play better with better quarterback play. Um, and then I want to talk about Jackson Smith and Jigba, but we're not going to talk about him here. We'll talk about him when I pick him. Um, and then I pick 13. We got the Steelers. We're going to go ahead and invest in the O-line, something they just like refuse to do and take Paris Johnson. Paris Johnson, probably the greatest human being in the draft, does a lot of charity work. Um, just a great guy from what I've read. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, good locker room guy. He's also just a great pass blocker. Um, I just kind of think that tackles and linemen from the Big Ten, you always kind of got to keep a closer eye on because the competition isn't as big, even though it is getting better, admittedly. Like, since the transfer portal, big the like, competition is getting better everywhere. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go with this with Paris Johnson at pick 13. And then at pick 14, we got the Packers. I, I joked before the draft last year, like, imagine them not take a wide receiver, and they didn't. So I just think that they now, like, already are against taking a receiver in the first round. Christian Watson has come into his own, and Romeo Dobbs isn't bad. Um, so they're just gonna address. I think you gotta address offense. It's gonna like trade Jordan Love, keep Aaron Rodgers happy, um, and that's gonna be. You could either go tackle here, but I think with the tackles left, uh, probably not the best idea. We could probably go interior D line with Brian Brazee still being on the board. Um, also, I'm not sure if that's how his name is pronounced, but that's how I keep seeing it pronounced and hearing it pronounced. So if that's wrong. Go ahead and stop me, but we're going to get Robert Tanyan's replacement and Michael Mayer. Um, I think it's just, pro he's probably the safest pick you can make in the draft, and he is going to add an element to that offense. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take Michael Mayer. Uh, Seahawks at pick 15. This is their pick, um, and I think here is a very good spot to address the interior D-line, which is a position of weakness for the Seahawks. Um, what is Tater Tot doing? Just chilling. Uh, pick 15. Yeah, I think we have to address the interior D line. Um, I know in the comments in the last video, a lot of you guys wanted me to take a linebacker instead of I forget who I did take last time. But I think, yeah, you guys wanted Trenton Simpson. I forget who I took, but um, we're going to go ahead and take the interior. I think Brian Brazee at pick 15 is kind of a steal. He's a very good player. A lot of people read his stats and are like, oh, he doesn't have the best stats. He doesn't look that good. Blah, 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 blah. I kind of starkly disagree. Um, I think Brian Brazi is a great talent. He dealt with a lot of off-the-field stuff, and the stuff he's put on film has looked good. Now, he is playing with Miles Murphy, so maybe that's why, but I think that Brian Brazi looks pretty good, um, and I like him here. I pick 15 for the Seahawks. Um, 
But at pick 16, we have the Patriots. And here we are going to get our Jacoby Myers replacement after what he did last week, which was the most insane. I don't know if anybody watched that Patriots game live, but that last play, dude. Oh, my God. Uh, Drew, I know you're listening to this, and I am sorry, brother. That was... I wish I was on the fly. I was a fly on the wall of your house. But anyway, we're going to go with Jackson Smith and Jigba. And this is what I want to say about Jackson Smith and Jigba. I think now I don't know how the NFL feels about him. I've been reading reports that a lot of people think he could be a second a day two to day three guy, which is insane. Uh, maybe day. Maybe I'm I misread it and it read, which makes more sense now that I'm saying it out loud. Round two to round three guy. Um but I think that Jackson Smith the Jigba is a player. If you just put on his tape, I think we're overthinking this. And like, there's always that one player that falls because people are overthinking it. And like, if you watched my videos from last year, y'all know how I felt about George Pickens. Um, and I was right about George Pickens. And I think the same thing is going to happen with Jackson Smith and Jigba. Now, I will admit, I do think he's going to have to play permanently in the slot in the NFL. Oops. Uh, permanently in the slot in the NFL. Just because he's played like 90-ish percent of his snaps out of the slot at Ohio State. And he missed this entire year, which is the reason he could fall. Nagging hamstring injury kind of reminds you of a guy like, uh, I don't know. Someone. Julio Jones always has a hamstring injury. Uh, Kadarius Toney always has a hamstring injury. Um, someone I was really high on for fantasy and that just blew up right in my face. Uh, so if you drafted Kadarius Tony from because of me, I'm sorry. Um, I am also am just sorry for myself because I drafted a ton of him. <sighs> anyway, uh, I think that Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to be a player that everybody kind of is like overthinking it. I think he's going to be a very good NFL player. The thing is, is like if he it, like why I say it depends on he, how he tests where he can play on the field depends on how he tests. I think a lot of people are comping him to Cooper Cup. And again, like I hate comps like that because Cooper Cup just had like one of the best wide receiver seasons ever. Like why are we going to comp or not even a rookie in the NFL to Cooper Cup? Um, but I do think they do have similar play styles as in they both can play out of the slot uh, or play primarily out of the slot. Um, good yard after catch guy. Uh great i mean like i just think of the championship game from last year with ohio state um i think it was a championship game last year where he had like uh jsn had like 300 and something yards like he went nuts like and, and that's in a playoff game like that's against the cream of the crop unless they played cincinnati but even still cincinnati had a very good defense last year um I think this is a player we're overthinking it, man. And I, I don't know for sure yet, but that's where I'm leaning. I think we're who, the teams that pass on Jackson Smith and Jigba. And why I said it with the Texans pick is because they're replacing a slot receiver. And there is a chance that Jackson Smith and Jigba ends up being the best receiver in this class. I don't know. But I think that it's just a player we're really overthinking it on. And I can't stress that enough. Um, pick 17. Last week, we went with C.J. Stroud um, because he fell this far. But in this draft, that's not the case. I think you definitely need to get a tackle. But at the same time, the Jets' offensive line like was not bad before it imploded. I think that you want to keep Elijah Vera Tucker at guard um, and see what you have in uh, Max Mitchell. But so we're not going to go line up. Uh, Sorry, offensive tackle here. What we're going to do is is we're going to try to get Robert Sala, his Fred Warner, and that's going to be Trenton Simpson. Uh, Trenton Simpson just flies around the field uh, for whoever doesn't know about Trent, Trent, Trent Simpson. Trenton Simpson, oh my God. Uh, great tackler, great in coverage, just probably the best linebacker prospect in the, in the class. I know a lot of people like Noah Sewell. Um, he moves really well for 250 at no, that being Noah Sewell. He just kind of misses a lot of tackles in my opinion, like, I want to see him get more polished as a tackler, but we'll see. I mean, if there's going to be two linebackers that go in the first, it's going to be Noah Sewell and Trenton Simpson. Um, but, yeah, I mean, my only gripe with the Jets and Robert Sala is, like, 
I am not a fan of Zach Wilson, and I personally think he stinks. His arm talent is undeniable, and if he could ever put it together, oh my god. But why I'm kind of annoyed with Robert Sala, and like not to go on a tangent, but like, how are you going to condone your players, especially your rookies, chirping for Mike White? And wearing Mike F and White shirts when you have a second year quarterback that's supposed to be your franchise guy. Like that destroys him. And like why I'm blaming Robert Sala is like one, why are you letting your rookies talk to you so much? Two, why are you letting them degrade the captain of this team? Three, do you not realize the damage you're doing to his confidence to a player who already is lacking confidence? Anyway, I know a lot of Jets fans don't care because they want to make the playoffs. They're all for Team Mike White. But I'm just saying, I think you guys are destroying Zach Wilson. Not that he's already not that I think he's fixable, but that's my two cents. Anyways, Lions, pick 18. We are going to take Keely Ringo. Keely Ringo is someone who is just an absolute freak of nature athlete. He's not, he's very raw, but what he lacks in coverage prowess, he has incredible recovery speed, which is why if you can ever put him together, he is going to be like arguably the best prospect, best corner in this class. Um, He's also really good as it is, and he doesn't even really know what he's doing. In doesn't know what he's doing. Quote quote. Um, but anyway, I think pairing him up with uh, Jeff Okuda, who's someone I love, and I'm very happy for Jeff Okuda, putting him together, and then getting Miles Murphy up front. Now you got a pretty stout defense, and just let Jared Goff continue to play within the system and deal the ball, which is kind of the reason why I would argue C.J. Stroud makes sense because I think C.J. Stroud has to be in a system to. Like, he needs to be a system quarterback, which is not a bad thing. Like, a lot of people say system quarterbacks are a bad thing. But, like, as a good coach, you should develop a system for your quarterback to succeed in. Um, but, yeah, I, I think C.J. Stroud would actually do very well on in, in the Lions offense. Um, but, anyway, pick 19 is the Bucks. You're not going to have a quarterback next year. Like, it's probably going to be Kyle Trask. It's definitely not going to be Tom Brady. That is for certain, in my opinion. So, we are going to go into the secondary and take uh, – Joey Porter Jr., someone I'm pretty high on. I think he's probably the most well-rounded corner in the class. He is his he's a pedigree player, like his dad played for the Steelers. Um, Joey Porter Sr. Um, but yeah, I like Joey Porter a lot. I think he does a very good mix of press man and zone coverage. So I think that's a very good good pickup for the Bucks secondary. Tennessee Titans. And this is a this is a pick I thought about a lot. To be completely honest with you, I thought about this a ton. Um, this depends on like what the Titans are going to do, because I think you guys need to start. The, like I think Mike Vrabel is a top top end coach in the NFL. I don't have a number for him, but I think he's a top end coach. And I think that like. With the Titans, like, you're going to have to figure out what you're doing with Ryan Tannehill. And you're going to have to figure out if Malik Willis can play. And if Malik Willis can't play, even though he did almost beat the Chiefs, which was insane. Um, and by him, I mean Derrick Henry and the rest of the team uh, with Malik Willis calling hike. Um, I think you should start putting the pieces in place for, like, kind of subtly laying down foundation pieces. Like, you have one in Traylon Burks, in my opinion. I think you need to get a tackle. For sure. Um, you need those cornerstone tackles. And your defense is good. Um, and then maybe you just trade up and draft the quarterback next year. Uh, or, or Malik Willis works out. One or the other. But um, So with this pick, I'm going to go ahead and take Quentin Johnston. Because I think this is a player who's going to be a foundational piece. And even if like you want to give Malik Willis the most support you can. And at this point, you're not really going to find that value in a tackle. Um, so I'm going with Quentin Johnston, who's arguably the best receiver in the class. And I think he's going to add a ton of value and a ton of support to whichever quarterback is playing there. Whether you bring in a quarterback at free agency, you go swing for the fences for Lamar, in which case you probably don't have this pick. Um, but definitely think that Quentin Johnston is a fantastic pickup at pick 20. Washington at pick 21. We are going to hopefully, for the love of God, finally get you your alpha male wide uh, cornerback one. And that's going to be Cam Smith. Um, I am very, very, a very big fan of J.C. Horn, who I think gets not nearly enough love because the Panthers are bad. And Cam Smith is basically a slightly worse version of J.C. Horn. Um, 
He's just now he's a very good boundary corner. He has great length, great speed, great quickness. Um, and he he just he will be he has the size to be an alpha corner one. Um, and I think he could definitely be a shutdown corner. Um, and like again, again, like he kind of draws comparisons to J.C. Horn, someone I'm very high on, um, and I think deserves so much more love than he gets. But anyway. Chargers at pick 22. Last week we went Bijan Robinson. I still think that's the right pick, especially at pick 22. Now you're picking later in the draft. Um, but we are going to pass on Bijan, and we are going to take Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt is a receiver that I've been watching a ton of tape on recently. So I'm trying to figure out how I stand with him. And everything I watch about Jalen Hyatt screams Chargers. Um, He's just a straight line burner. He's got good size. He's constantly behind defenses. And when you have someone who could throw the ball as just as far as Justin Herbert can, like, yeah, probably Jalen Hyatt's going to work out for your offense. Keenan Allen's getting up there in age. Um, the only thing I really like in this, I've watched, I think, three or four games of Jalen Hyatt so far. And the thing that sticks out to me the most is he's either running a go, he's either running a post, He's either running a curl or something schemed. And, like, that's a concern for me because, like, that is a very, very, very limited route tree uh, for a first-round pick. Um, like, I like go back and watch the Alabama game. Almost all of his yards are go routes and comebacks. So, like, I'm just saying, like, for the Chargers, that's a perfect fit because that's, like, Jalen Guyton on steroids for you guys who did wonders for your offense. And I think you're probably going to move on from Brandon Staley, and I hope to God you do even if you make the AFC Championship because he is not a good head coach. Get Sean Payton and go win the Super Bowl. Like, it's that simple. You have the defense. It's hurt right now. you got Derwin James, J.C. Jackson, who hopefully can rebound, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, and then, fit, and then Asante Samuel Jr. Now you're going to have your offense back. And I still think Bijan Robinson is as good of a pick, but like, move off of Staley. He did. He's a defensive coach, and your defense is bad. And it was bad before it got hurt. So I don't really want to hear that excuse. Like, get Sean Payton because if, if the tell me this is the best Brandon Staley as good as Sean Payton? No, Sean Payton literally won the Super Bowl. Um, I digress. Giants at pick twenty three. I've gone back and forth with this pick. I still like Rashi Rice here, Rashi Rice, however you pronounce his name. He's one of my favorite receivers in the class, and I think he's going to be the best value pick with whoever takes him in in, in the draft. Like, he's 6'2", two, uh, I think 205, 210, um, just so polished, man. He is such a polished receiver. Um, he's, he's also a fantastic contested catcher. Um, yeah, he's playing at SMU, but Cortland Sutton also played at SMU, um, and he looks pretty good and i think rushy rice is much better than Cortland sutton was um he's been in the what's it called the blink blink to cough award however you pronounce it he's been in that conversation since he was a sophomore a true sophomore this is his first year as a wide receiver one and he has literally a billion yards like i don't know why we're not talking more about rashi rice like i think he is just for what the giants need in, in a reliable pass catcher who could kind of take over a game it's rashi rice um but we're not going to take him this week. I took him last week. I want to do a little bit something a little bit different. And we are going to address something that's just as big of a need, in my humble opinion. And that is interior offensive line. And we are going to take the best guard in the class, Osiris Torrance. Um, I don't know why Mock Draft Database hates Osiris Torrance, by the way. They hate him, man. Um, but Osiris Torrance, like, I've seen footage of him picking up stunts by himself. And... It's some of the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Now, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not an online expert, so I'm not going to act like I know all, all of it. But from what I've seen from Osiris Torrance, he is very, very good. And from what I've seen with the few bits of Giants I've watched, I mean, John Feliciano's not it. I mean, I know he plays center, but then you have, who do you guys sign? Mark Lewinsky. He's not it. Um... Yeah, dude, like, Evan, ne uh, sorry, Osiris Torrance is better than any guard you have, maybe besides Ben Bredesen, who's a pretty good run blocker. Uh, anyways, I picked 24, we are going to take, we, I, I, I was between Tyree Wilson here, because I think that Baltimore would gamble on Tyree Wilson here, being that they need a Tyus Bowser replacement, um, and Tyree Wilson is just a freak of nature, but I opted to go with Rashi Rice 
Talked about him a bit with the Giants pick. I think he could be what Lamar Jackson has needed for his entire career. Um, so we're going to take Rushy Rice. Uh, pick 25 is the Broncos. This was an interesting pick for me, but I'm going to go with tackle. Because honestly, I really don't know what the move is for the Broncos. And I mean, whose pick is, uh, is this? Whose pick is this, by the way? Who do they have this pick from? I forget. Comment below if you know which pick this is. I'm, I'm blanking off the top of my head. But, oh, wait. It's uh Miami's pick. Uh, wait. Yeah. 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 It's not Miami's pick. It's the pick Miami had, which I think was the 49ers pick, um, which makes sense. So, yeah, it's the 49ers pick. I'm going to go with Anton Harrison here. He's just someone who is a very good, true pass protector. Um and you need to replace Billy Turner at right tackle. So we're going to go ahead and take Anton Harrison um, at pick 25. Pick 26, we got the Cowboys. And I'm going to do something that either Cowboys fans are going to love or hate. And that is take Bijan Robinson. Let Tony Pollard walk. Let Zeke walk. Bijan's better than both of them. Pretty simple. Um, and you don't have to pay anybody. Uh, pick 27 is the Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals. Um, and someone gently corrected me in my last video about... Taking, I think I took Brian Branch as a uh, Jesse Bates replacement, and I totally forgot you guys already had Daxon Hill as a Jesse Bates replacement. So thanks for correcting me. Um, and in this time around, we are going to take Clark Phillips. Uh, I think Clark Phillips is just, he's hes an insanely twitchy corner, um, and he has great short area quickness. And I think that he's just going to make, like the Bengals, to me, already have the most underrated defense in the NFL. Um and I think that they're the second best team in the NFL. I haven't done a power rankings video in a long time, but like, yeah, they are nasty, uh, top to bottom. They could do everything. Joe Burrow is l Joe Burrow has been winning games with like people say like, oh, the Bengals have the most weapons in the NFL, which is true. Like I do think that T Higgins and Jamar Chase are the best receiver duo in the NFL, and that's not even mentioning Tyler Boyd, who's one of the best wide receiver threes in the NFL. And you also have Joe Mixon, who's eating. And But Joe Burrow was winning with just Jamar Chase, with just T. Higgins, with just Joe Mixon, and with just Samaj P. Ryan. Like, he's been winning with everybody there, not at the same time. Like, fix the defense. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what you guys do with T. Higgins, because I can't imagine a universe where you could pay Chase, Higgins, Mixon, Boyd, Someone's got to walk. Probably going to figure out some way to keep Higgins and, and Chase unless someone tries to, like, if the Ravens or the Giants try to trade for Higgins at some point. Um, but anyway, pick 28 is the Kansas City Chiefs, and I am going to go with someone who's flying up my own personal draft board, and that is B.J. Ojolari. Um, from what I've been reading and listening to about B.J. Ojolari, he is super highly regarded in NFL circles. Um He's a pass rusher specialist at the moment. He kind of needs to put on some size. He's 6'3", 250. He's been a team captain. His leadership and work ethic is very well regarded in the LSU group. He wears number 18. I don't know what that means, but I know it's a very important thing to LSU players. Um, I think he just lacks his like biggest weakness is power, kind of like I alluded to just a second ago. His best ability is his speed rush ability. Um... But yeah, he also beat up on Broderick Jones a few times in the SEC Championship. Uh, people think he's going to be a second round pick. I can see him sneaking into the first, especially how he tests. And if he could put on some size, more power to you. Vikings at pick 29, and we're going to go with Devin Witherspoon. I thought about going Josh Downs here. I'm just like super turned off by Josh Downs' size. I think he's only 5'9". Um, and like, I just think that like your defense is so anemic. They've allowed 400-plus yards in the past five games, I think. So please fix this defense for the love of God. So we're going to take Devin Witherspoon. He's someone who's flying up draft boards, getting a lot of buzz in draft circles. Um, just an aggressive corner who excels in man coverage. And I think that at the end of the day, that's what you need if you're Minnesota. Anyway, Buffalo Bills at pick 30. I really want to go Jameer Gibbs here because I think that you guys need that power runner to complement James Cook. Kind of build like your own... Cleveland backfield with Kareem Hunt and uh, Chubb, but with how loaded this free agency is for the running back position, you got like players like Saquon Barkley, 
Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders. Uh, the list kind of goes on, and it is an extensively powerful list. Like, the wide receiver position sucks this year, but the running backs, like, think of a good running back, and he's probably a free agent this year. Uh, so we actually, and by we, I mean I, opted to go with Andrew Voorhees. Probably the second best guard in the class. I thought about taking John Michael Schmitz um, to play center, but I think at the end of the day, like you could probably get a center, pretty, a pretty good center, cheap in free agency. I'm not totally confident with what that looks like this year, um, as in the free agency market for guards and centers. But I think drafting a guard is more important than drafting a center, especially with like when you get players like Creed Humphrey in the second round. Um, but anyways, at pick 31. With the Eagles' real pick, uh, we are going to take Nolan Smith. At, oops, Nolan Smith, edge rusher out of Georgia. I think that Nolan Smith, he got compared to Khalil Mack for the 247. Um, he's about 235, 240. He's an elite edge rusher, elite run defender, I mean. Um, he just constantly wins against tackles. Probably want to play him as a Y9 or a 5 tech. Uh, maybe one of the most pound for pound strongest edge rushers in the class. Um, his pass rush needs to be developed, but he did tear his peck this year, which is probably why he's going to fall. Um, he's a former number one overall recruit and in Georgia with the, how they run their defense and people coming in and coming out, going for certain things. Um, it's kind of hard to gauge. Like, Trayvon Walker flew up to the number one spot out of nowhere, not because of what he did at Georgia, because how he tested as a prospect. So I kind of see something similar happening for Nolan Smith, maybe from the second to first round, not from X to number one overall pick. Um, but with the last pick of the draft, we have the Houston Texans. Um, and we are going to take Tyree Wilson, because he somehow fell all the way down to 32, and that is an absolute steal of a pick. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. That's going to do it for this mock draft. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, leave a like, a like, comment, subscribe, do all that cool YouTube stuff. And if I said something you didn't like about your team or if I said something that was incorrect about your team, please go ahead and correct me in the comments. Happy to talk about it. If you said something I liked, let's talk about it. If you said something I disliked, let's talk about it. But with all that being said, take it easy. I appreciate you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.